All right, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at the New Mexico elk tag application process. And this one is one I'm really excited about because New Mexico does not use any kind of a point system. So in New Mexico, you get no preference points, no bonus points. Everyone is on a level playing field from year to year. So that makes a service like Go Hunt incredibly valuable. And with a Go Hunt Insider membership, I'm able to really adjust based on uh, draw odds, harvest percentage, uh, bull to cow ratios, all of these things and get really accurate numbers based on the number of applications last year and really dial in a unit that truly fits uh, my expectations and gives me a realistic expectation of what it'll take to draw it. So uh, if you haven't yet, make sure and listen to episode 19 of the Elk Talk podcast and Randy Newberg and I go through and really dial in on the details of New Mexico. Uh, keep in mind in that podcast, I was pretty negative about the state of New Mexico when it comes to applying and hunting for elk. Uh, there's a little bit of, of uh, listener discretion in that, but New Mexico is a great state. It is a state that has potential for really big trophy bulls. Uh, as I mentioned, there's no point systems in New Mexico, so every year everyone has the same chances of drawing, which is really appealing. The other thing about New Mexico is in terms of cost, it's not overly expensive, and uh, there is a new uh, regulation for this year, which we'll talk about. But before we do, I want to cover a couple really uh, basic things to keep in mind when you're applying in New Mexico. First off, 84% of all the tags are reserved for residents. So if you are a non-resident, only 16% are set aside for you. Within that 16%, only 6% are actually set aside for non-residents who do not hunt with an outfitter. So if you hunt with an outfitter and you're a non-resident, 10% of the tags are set aside just for that pool. And that pool actually has probably better draw odds than most of the resident pools and definitely better than the non-resident pool. Uh, so if you're a non-resident hunting New Mexico without an outfitter, you only get 6% of the tags and your draw odds are gonna be very low in most of the hunts. With that being said, everyone has an equal chance and you can't draw if you don't apply. So uh, keeping that in mind, New Mexico has a really simple system. You can choose uh, three hunt choices and they actually look at all three. So if your application is drawn, they look at your first choice hunt. If there are tags left, you get a tag. If there's not, they immediately look at your second choice hunt. If there's tags left for that hunt, you get one of those tags. If there's not, they move to your third choice and look at that one. So very important to put three choices down uh, for hunt choices, keeping in mind that you wanna put the most desired hunt first with the least desired hunt third. That way you don't put a, you know, a antlerless cow hunt in a easy to draw unit as your first choice and put a hard to draw rifle bull tag as your third choice because you're most likely going to draw that cow hunt and never get to uh, the bull hunt. So list your hunt choices in order of how badly you want to draw it and they'll actually look at those first three. Uh, cost wise, one thing that changed this year in 20. Uh, 19 is you are required to buy a license and it's non-refundable. So in the past you bought the license and then you could check the box that says if I don't draw my tag I want a refund for my license. You get the license fee actually refunded. In 2019 you have to pay for the hunting license and you don't get the money back. You're stuck with a license whether you draw the tag or not. The good news is the license is only $65 for a non-resident. So not the end of the world. Uh, and when it comes to applying, still probably one of the least expensive options for uh, applying for an elk tag. New Mexico breaks their elk tags into a couple different categories. And based on those categories, the costs are different. I'm gonna jump out really quickly to Elk 101. And within the University of Elk Hunting online course, there's a full module uh, devoted to planning your elk hunt. And within that module, there's a full chapter on obtaining elk tags. And if we look at New Mexico, there's just a, a brief summary of it. 
uh, the $65 hunting license. And then if you have a standard elk tag, it's $548. And in the quality or high demand areas, it's $773. So uh, based on how high of demand there is for that hunt, it's based on the draw odds from the previous, I think average of the previous five years, uh, you're going to pay more for those harder to draw hunts. Uh, going back into that, so basically you're looking at uh, $548 or $773 plus the $65 license fee plus uh, an application fee. All of that is due at the time you apply. If you draw, they keep your money. If you don't draw, they send you back the tag fee, but keep the $65 for your license, which is non-refundable. A uh, couple things, I'm in Go Hunt Insider here, and with a membership to Go Hunt Insider, you're going to be able to see a ton of information about New Mexico. You're going to get an overview of the state and the regulations. One of the things I like to look at first is the strategy article. And for the New Mexico strategy article, there's just a plethora of information, so much information about um, how the draw works, about what units are going to be good, about where you're going to have a better chance of drawing, just a, a lot of information. Uh, one of the things that I like to look at here is they've got a, a chart that says non-resident hunts with a great combination of trophy potential, draw odds, and harvest success. So they've basically taken a lot of the uh, statistics that they provide and combined them to give you some units that really have a lot of uh, potential both to draw and to shoot a bigger bull. So for instance here unit 38 uh, rifle hunt you've got trophy potential of 320 inches plus you've got 18 percent draw odds and harvest percentage if you draw that hunt of 47 percent. Uh, unit 7 archery 330 plus potential draw odds of 33 percent and harvest success of 54 percent. So for an archery hunt 54% success, uh, great trophy potential. Anyway, a lot of really good information in these strategy articles. Another thing that I wanted to, to talk about was we looked at the percentage of tags that are issued for a non-resident versus a non-resident with an outfitter versus a resident. And GoHunt actually breaks it down and shows you what the uh, percentage of draws are for these different pools. And within, uh, if we look at the archery hunts, we're gonna take an example of unit, we'll do unit 45. And trophy potential in unit 45, they're listed as 330 plus. The resident draw odds for that hunt, for an archery tag in unit 45, is 46%. Now, if you apply as a non-resident in the guided or outfitted pool, remember you get 10% of the tags set aside, your draw odds for that same tag are 61%. And if you go the non-resident without an outfitter, your draw odds are 14%. So it definitely pays to pay attention to which pool you're applying for. And one more thing to, to pay attention to, or one more thing I like to look at, Go Hunt within the strategy article actually breaks down the units with the highest bull to cow ratios. And for me, bull to cow ratios are very important as I'm researching a new unit. And there are units in New Mexico with 58 to 100 bull to cow ratios. Uh, the top 10 here are all 40 to 100 or greater. So incredible management within New Mexico, both for bull to cow ratios, trophy potential, uh, these units range from 320 all the way up to 370 inch trophy potential with high bull to cow ratios with 40 to 90% public land. So some great hunt options in the state of New Mexico uh, if you're a non-resident looking to apply for an elk tag. All right, so what I wanna do now is just jump into Go Hunt Insider and go into filtering 2.0 and take a look at New Mexico using uh, draw criteria that we can really screen out some of the features that we wanna look for. So we're in New Mexico, we pick elk, and you'll see all of the elk units come up. We've got the famed 
Gila units over here on the western side, the southwest corner, 15, 16A, 16D, uh, 16C, 16E, 17. Those are all really popular units that are known for big bulls. Uh, I'll say there are a lot of units in New Mexico that have good trophy potential. Those Gila units are probably the more well-known where you have a realistic expectation or chance of hunting a 330 to a 370 class bull. So let's jump over here. I'm going to look at the non-resident pool. Again, you have a choice of guided as a non-resident, resident or non-resident. Click on the non-resident pool. I'm going to leave the, the draw odds set at zero for right now. And I'm going to look at archery. So I'm going to select archery as the weapon choice and season. In New Mexico, they have a, a handful of different seasons, even within some of the weapons. So archery has an early and a late season. Uh, this year, uh, September 1st through the 14th is the early hunt, and then the 15th through the 24th is the late hunt for archery. Uh, muzzleloader usually comes right after that, and then usually one or two rifle seasons after the muzzleloader hunt during the month of October. So we're taking a look at the archery hunts and we can look at public land and I'm just going to move this up to we'll say 30% public land for right now. Obviously we want more than that but you'll notice a few units did disappear. And then harvest success, I'm going to bump this up to 25%. And again you noticed some of the units especially up in the northwest corner disappeared when we increased our expectation for harvest. Uh, now this is this is showing any unit again. There's no point system in New Mexico So it's showing any unit that we have any chance of drawing as we set our minimum draw odds to oh, We'll bump it way up to 20% to start with you're going to notice a bunch of those units disappear So there's actually only five units that a non-resident has a 20% or greater draw odd with 30% or greater public land and 25% or greater harvest success. Uh, and we can see here in this chart, that's unit 5B, unit 18, and unit 24. Within that, we can see we've got a uh, bull to cow ratio of 37 to 100, public land of 82%, decent trophy potential, and 21% draw odds for the early archery hunt. All three of these that are showing up are going to be early archery hunts. As you get into the, the second season archery, the later archery, your draw odds are going to be a lot lower because the rut's kicking in, they're a more desirable tag. Uh, so if we back this off, if I was looking at applying in New Mexico this year, and I wanted, we'll say 10% draw odds, so 1 in 10 chance of drawing, we get a few more uh, units that pop up. I'm going to increase public land to at least 50% just to make sure we've got plenty of places to hunt. All of these units that showed up with the 10% draw odds still have, uh, we're still able to hunt them with the 50% filter on public land. Now I'm going to increase our harvest success. I'm going to go up to 40%, see if there's anything there. And you'll notice unit 30 is the only one that shows up. It's got a trophy potential of 330 inches, uh, public land of 78%, draw odds of 11%, harvest success rate of 43%, and that's for the early archery hunt. So that one sounds good, uh, just looking at the statistics, but there's probably a catch to it. Uh, so large tracts of private land, large expanses of BLM badlands, good number of deer, small numbers of elk. So again, we're starting to get the picture there. This is gonna be desert, sage, rocky, probably no timber, uh, not a lot of elk. Overall population of elk is, is quite a bit lower. Uh, if we go down and look at uh, non-resident draw odds for the early hunt, uh, we're at 11%. If we look at that late hunt, it's still at 8%, which is decent draw odds for the, for the rut hunt. Again, not a hunt that I would be looking at. Uh, more badlands type hunting, not typical elk habitat. Low numbers of elk. Uh, we're definitely going to look for something else. So as I start honing in here, if I'm truly wanting to hunt New Mexico, I'm probably going to want to go somewhere where there's more trophy potential. So I'm going to bump the trophy potential up to 330. 
Uh, I'm going to lower my draw odds because it's probably unrealistic to expect to find a trophy unit with good draw odds. So I'm going to go down to 5% draw odds uh, for 330 plus bull. Again, I'm going to look at only the, the archery hunts. And I'm going to bump the success rates down to 20%. And we've got a few more units now popping up, including a couple over in the Gila. Uh, unit 17, we'll click on Unit 17 and get some information there. So within Unit 17, uh, if we just slide down here, great trophy potential. It's 360 inches plus. Uh, as a non-resident, the early archery hunt is a 5.7% draw odd. The late archery hunt is 2.6%. And realistically, that's what you're going to be dealing with in New Mexico. Our hunts in the 2 to 5% draw odd. Uh, if you really want to hunt a good unit, especially if you want to hunt those units during the peak rut. So if we go down to a 2% draw odd, good trophy potential of 330 plus, harvest success of 20%, public land of 50%. Uh, we added a couple more, unit 16A, unit 15. Both are very popular units. Uh, both offer plenty of non-resident tags. Again, in that 6% pool that non-residents get. Uh, one thing I want to mention before we get too far along here is if we just go and look at draw odds, it's going to show us how many tags are available for non-residents. So I'm looking at the non-resident pool for elk in New Mexico. And for archery season, you can see there's a handful of units with seven tags, some with zero. We've got five, six, nine, a couple with one. So unit 6B, a very popular unit, uh, one late archery tag for non-residents, 311 applications. So do the math on that, but you're looking at 0.03% chance of drawing. The thing I want to point out is there's one tag available. If you apply as a party of two, you will immediately get thrown out because there will be no way you can draw that tag. Uh, another unit, uh, if we look at unit 16E, there are four non-resident tags. Uh, there are uh, let's see, 88 applications for the late season hunt. If you apply as a party of two, you've limited yourself to the first three tags. So if you are the fourth tag drawn and you apply as a party of two, you get thrown out because there are not two tags available. So just keep that in mind. Be sure you're looking at how many tags are available when you apply, because if you apply as a party, that can have an effect on your draw success. Uh, so if I was, if I was realistically, and I know some of the units in New Mexico, units like 15, 16 A, 16 D, 17, 36, those are popular units. And the nice thing about Go Hunt is with filtering 2.0, I can compare those units to each other. And I can look at bull to cow ratios in each one. I can look at trophy potential, draw odds, harvest success, all of that just by turning down the filters. And if I just turn down the filters, it's going to show me every unit uh, within the state of New Mexico for elk. And so now I've got the archery units pulled up for non-resident. I'm going to pull the quality down, trophy potential down. And these are all the units that I have uh, potential to apply for in New Mexico. So if I click on unit 15, actually let me back up before I click on it. And if I just scroll down here in the chart, Unit 15, well known for the many record class bull elk that bow hunters and muzzleloader hunters have taken. Uh, you'll see the early archery tag has a 4.6% draw odd. The late archery tag has a 2.5%. Harvest success of 26 to 35%. I can see the number of applications. The bull to cow ratio is 37 to 100. Uh, quickly comparing that to, we'll say, Unit 16D, which has a trophy potential of 370 plus, same bull to cow ratio of 37 to 100, but much lower draw odds. We're looking at 0.58 to 1.8% draw odds. Uh, and the reason why is probably the harvest. We've got 41 to 57% harvest success. A uh, ton of public land there. If we look at unit 16E, same bull to cow ratio, uh, but the harvest success is 14 to 19%, which 
makes the draw odds go up from 7.8 to 12%. So we can get a really good idea going through just the chart here of the different units. And as I hover over a unit or as I come over on the unit here, it'll highlight the unit. I'm on unit 16E in the chart and it highlights it on the map. Unit 17 highlights it on the map. We'll notice unit 17 has a bold decal ratio of 48 to 100. Uh, draw odds are lower, success rates are fairly high. So typical trends you're gonna see, the higher the success rate, the higher the trophy potential, the higher the bull to cow ratio, the better quality hunt you're going to have, and the lower draw odds you're going to have. So I use New Mexico kind of as a backup or a, a swing for the fences, as Randy says, and I'll apply for just the premier units in New Mexico. If I get lucky and draw one of those units, I change my plans and go hunt in New Mexico. If I don't draw it, it's no big deal. I've only invested the $65 license. I get refunded on the tag fee and I can keep shooting for the moon in New Mexico. So that's just a, a quick overview uh, of the power that Go Hunt Insider brings when you're looking at applications, especially in a state like New Mexico, where it's a true uh, draw odd state. Everyone has the same chances. It's not weighted on points and you can really see what unit you have the potential of drawing, what your chances of drawing are, and kind of structure your hunt based on your expectations and those draw odds. So if you're interested in signing up for Go Hunt Insider, just go to gohunt.com forward slash elk 101. And when you sign up for the Insider membership through that link, Go Hunt's going to send you a $50 gift card to the Elk 101 store. And you're gonna be able to use that to purchase anything, any gear you need for elk hunting. So that's the wrap on New Mexico. New Mexico is a great state to apply for every year for a non-resident, knowing that it's going to be just a random, you might draw it, you might not, you have the same odds as everyone else. And if you don't, when I don't draw New Mexico, I always have plenty of backup options to be able to uh, get an over-the-counter tag or a unit that's got a much better draw odd in another state. And again, check out Go Hunt and their insider membership and Good luck in the New Mexico draw. Don't forget the deadline is March 20th this year. Last year it was March 21st. This year it's March 20th. So be sure and uh, remember that date. If you're applying, check out Elk Talk podcast episode 19 for a lot more details on the draw. And Randy and I share a lot of uh, stories and experiences from our time hunting in New Mexico. So catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching and good luck in the draws. Yeah.